I got an email the other day from Cindy asking about what type of items or equipment to keep in case of an emergency. Cindy, I am so glad you asked that question. I've been meaning to go through my emergency kit for a while now, and this is a great opportunity to do so. It's a good idea to go through your emergency toolkit to find items that may have migrated away since the last time you used them. Let's go through my toolkit to see what I have and what I need and what I hope to never have to use. Hi, I'm Robert from Trailmeister, and when I'm not on the trail or in camp, I'm helping other horse folk gain the skills and the confidence to make their dreams of trail riding and camping with horses a reality. Before we get too much further, please hit that like button below and please use our Amazon links to help us keep creating content for you. Things happen and being able to handle minor inconveniences on your own can keep you on the trail and on your trip without having to call for help. The whole trick to maintaining your inner tranquility and not letting a minor problem spoil an entire trip is having a well-equipped toolkit on hand. Sure, you could call a roadside assistance company and wait for an hour or more, or you could be prepared and be back on the road in a matter of minutes. The choice is yours. Your toolkit should contain the basic items to help you deal with everyday problems and annoyances. Here's what I keep in my traveling toolkit. I have it broken down into four essentials, 10 tools, three things to keep stuff together, five things to keep the lights on, nine tire changing tools, and three miscellaneous items that I won't leave home without. Let's check them out. Let's dump out this tool bag and see what I still have in here as well as what's wandered off. And to do that, I have a checklist. Voila. Let's go through the checklist one item at a time and make sure we have what we need as well as make notes for what we need to get. So the very first fire extinguisher to keep a small fire from becoming unmanageable. I actually carry two, one in the cab of the truck and one in the trailer for your fire extinguishers, it's always a good idea to check the, the gauge on this to make sure that they're still working. Check that regularly. The second item is jumper cables to save the day when you forget and leave your headlights on. Item number three, and probably not number three in importance, is a first aid kit. I keep this one in the cab of my truck. I have more extensive ones in the trailer, both for people and for my horses. So, fire extinguisher, jumper cables, first aid kit. Number four is my jump starter battery pack. These are great for if you leave your headlights on and you're riding by yourself. It's also a good idea to check these and the battery is dead. So this is something that I need to get recharged and get taken care of before my next trip. So, work on. No matter how well constructed your horse trailer or your truck is, eventually something is going to need to be tightened or loosened or pried opened or cut. For that reason, it's a good idea to have a few basic tools with you. Here are the ones that I keep for every trip. The first of the 10, screwdrivers, both Phillips head and flat head. They're great for tightening nuts and bolts as well as for prying things apart. So a screwdriver, got it. Next up are pliers. I like to have a, an assortment of pliers in my toolkit for squeezing things, holding nuts and bolts where you tighten them, all sorts of uses for these. A set of channel locks for turning pipes or hanging onto oversized nuts. Next up is a hammer for straightening what got bent, bending what got straightened, for driving stakes and nails and pulling them out again, as well as providing a little bit of uh, persuasion when needed. Next up is something that you probably already have in your pocket, a pocket knife for cutting rope and twine, removing wire insulation, or just whittling if you're so inclined. Next up are wire cutters for cutting electrical wire or turning a middle coat hanger into a marshmallow skewer. 
a small tape measure for figuring out how much ground clearance you're going to have to get over that boulder stuck in the road. Number nine is a mini hacksaw for cutting away twisted bolts, thick plastic, anything that's a little bit too much for that pocket knife. And the next item is the one that I use, but you can get a folding one. This is Stella. I always carry a saw and they're very handy for cutting a tree across the only road out and you can't back up. I probably use Stella here a lot more than any of the other items that I have. Some of the backcountry forest roads that we go up and down to camp, well, they don't get maintained that well and sometimes we have to either cut our way in or cut our way out. Stella does that for me. Three items to keep stuff together. While none of these three will mend a broken heart, they'll all keep a situation from going from bad to worse. The first thing is glue, super glue, as well as a couple tubes of epoxy. These are gonna make for high strength repairs that'll get you back home. Next up are zip ties. They're great for bundling bits and bobs and keeping things out of the way. Zip ties. The number three thing to hold stuff together, duct tape. A universal fix it for almost any repair. If duct tape can't solve the problem, well, maybe all is lost. And now for five items to help keep the lights on. Nothing is more aggravating than trailer lights blinking on and off on their own, or even worse, having a police officer pull you over because of brake light is out. That's why having a few select items in your traveling toolbox can be unbelievably handy. Number one is electrical tape. Great for preventing sparks and keeping fuses from blowing. Next up are spare fuses, both for your trailer and your truck. I keep a baggie of spare fuses in with my multimeter and it's come in handy more than once. Check with your owner's manual for both your trailer and your truck to see what type of spare fuses to carry. Next up are spare bulbs for both your headlights as well as your brake and your turn lights. So where are they? Looks like I've misplaced mine. Keeping those spare bulbs in with your kit will help you from getting a traffic violation or worse. So, spare bulbs, get some. Now that I know I need to get some spare headlight and running light bulbs, next up on the list is a headlamp. Because without fail, when you need to work on something, it's going to be dark. I like these headlamp models because it allows me to work and freeze up both hands. Item number five for keeping the lights on, a multimeter. An inexpensive multimeter is really, really handy for troubleshooting any type of electrical problem. The most common problem that anybody is going to encounter is a flat tire. And being able to change a flat tire yourself alongside the road is gonna save you lots of time and money. Here are the nine items that I keep on hand to change tires safely. First up, get at least three reflective triangles, flashers, or flares, and make sure that they're DOT approved. Next up is a reflective safety vest. Make sure that you're going to be seen if you're changing a tire alongside the road. I also keep wheel chocks on hand for keeping a vehicle or a trailer from rolling when I don't want it to. Next to my wheel chocks, I always keep a trailer aid ramp on hand. It makes lifting the trailer much, much easier for changing that tire. Once you have the tire up, a lug wrench for getting those lug nuts off the tire. I mark mine so that I know which end fits my trailer tires. I like these star-shaped ones because they give me a lot more leverage. I also keep a can of Fix-A-Flat in my toolkit. I don't know if it's going to work, but it makes me feel happy. I also keep gloves in my toolkit and, oh, here they are, gloves. A tire pressure gauge, very important to tell just how flat your tires are. And wrapping up our tire changing kit, a portable air compressor. And again, if you're going to carry a portable air compressor, you really want to check it and make sure it's going to work. 
I've been negligent in keeping this charged. So I'm glad we looked at it now. So those are the nine things that I keep on hand in case I have to change a tire. And now the three miscellaneous items that I generally won't leave home without. Number one, a multi-tool. Pretty much every item in here is in this tool someplace. They're awfully, awfully handy, and if they're good enough for MacGyver, they're good enough for me. A multi-tool. Next up, a permanent marker. Sharpies are great for marking your things, as well as marking which wire is which. They also keep a wee tiny notebook. The next thing is, I think, one of the most important, and it's a communications device. Our cell phones are wonderful, but we've all been in areas where there isn't a cell signal or you don't have any bars. For that reason, I always carry some type of satellite messenger. I'm a big fan of these sat packs. There's also the inReach and the spot devices. My goal with all of these items is to be able to make a temporary fix that will last until I get home or be able to call for help in case I can't make that appropriate fix. So there you have it, my basic toolbox, or as I like to say, 31 vacation savers, and they all fit in a standard size tool bag. I'll put a link below to the tool bag checklist that I use. Cindy, I hope that this helps answer your question. And as always, for more information on trail riding and camping with horses, give us a visit at trailmeister.com. We're also the world's largest guide to horse trails and camps. And until next time, happy trails. A bottle opener belongs in every toolkit.